Okay, it's 703. Welcome to the Arlington Housing Authority monthly uh, regular board meeting, uh, Wednesday, December 15, 2021. Um, I'll read the public participation guidelines as we get closer. But um, so we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, roll call, Gar. Here. Joanne. Here. Fiorella. Here. And Nick. Here, here. Brian's here. And we have Sandy on taking notes, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so right uh, to the interim executive director's report. Jack. All right. So um, so the Department of Health and Human Services um, from the town of Arlington will be providing the Arlington Housing Authority with COVID-19 tests to distribute to AHA residents. Um, the AHA and Department of Health and Human Services are in the process of determining a distribution plan for these tests. Um, the Arlington Housing Authority has partners, partnered with Keys Drug to administer Moderna booster shots to AHA residents. Uh, we've provided Keys Drug the results from the questionnaire that was sent out earlier this month with full interest in a booster clinic. After reviewing the numbers of those that would participate in the clinic, Clinic, it was decided that clinics would be scheduled at Chestnut Manor, Cusack Terrace, Craig Village, and Winslow Towers on December 23rd. Notices for this clinic with instructions and requirements will be going out to residents tomorrow. Um, we, we apologize for, you know, fairly short notice. A week is still a good amount of time, but it was as soon as the, um, the drug company could get out here to do the vaccine. So we wanted to get them out as soon as possible. Uh, we are very grateful to Keys Drug and look forward to completing these boosters, these booster clinics next week. Uh, the, the balcony resurfacing project is complete at Chestnut Manor. Uh, the Cusack Terrace roof replacement project is wrapping up. We are grateful for the residents of Cusack Terrace and Arlington Catholic and, and for our, into Arlington Catholic for their patience and understanding related to the loss of parking spaces and other interruptions during this, uh, during this time. Uh, Arlington Housing Authority will submit its final application for CPA funding for the Minority Manor window project this month. Uh, we are working with DHCD related to next steps for the window study and window project. Additionally, we'll be working with the town of Arlington to complete requirements and agreements related to the ARPA funding earmarked for the project for this project and others. Uh, I received a message from Adam Chapelain uh, earlier today outlining that, so we're excited to be moving forward in that process. Um, Annual rent redetermination packets for senior public housing res residents are being mailed out to residents this week. Residents will need to complete the packets and provide the required documentation by February 28th. Uh, residents with questions related to the process um, will be asked to contact their property manager. Uh, the Arlington Housing Authority is continue to continue, continuing to apply for eligible residents through the SHERA program. Property managers are also reaching out to residents that have been determined to be likely eligible for SHERA in order to help them get rental assistance and maintain their tenancy. Um, additionally, um, in order for the contractor to complete the asbestos abatement portion of the Win Winslow Towers AC project, the main office will not be accessible by staff, public, or residents from December 27th, 2021 to December 31st, 2021. Offices at the other buildings will continue to be open. Applications will be available in the main office entrance area. The drop box will be monitored uh, multiple times each day for those dropping off pay paperwork or rent. And staff will be accessible by phone and email. Uh, calls to the receptionist, maintenance clerk, and others will be forwarded to offsite phone lines, ensuring communication is not disrupted. Also, as a reminder, Friday, December 31st, is a holiday for staff and all offices will be closed that day, anyways. Uh, we determined that this was the best week to do this disruptive work due to the slow time of year and the fact that we already had a holiday that week. So it's a less, in, it's a less um, disruptive uh, week to do this. And if we gave them a week, they could get it done in a week rather than being piecemealed over multiple weeks. Um, automatic laundry service installed the new laundry machines at each of the buildings on Monday and Tuesday of the past week. Instructions have been posted at each of the sites in English and Mandarin Chinese. Uh, residents that have questions are encouraged to call their property manager. We are still in the process of confirming the rotating mem members of the grievance panel. Uh, we have also submitted our grievance procedure to DHCD for a preliminary review to ensure it meets regulatory requirements. Uh, we hope to receive some word from DHCD soon regarding that. Um, also, um, 
for a staff update, we are currently completing an internal hiring process to fill the vacant work and forming job, working foreman job. Um, applications are due uh, at the end of this month. That's, That's it. it. Any questions for Jack? <clears throat> no question. Am I called on? Uh, did you say something, Joanne? Yes. Oh, sure, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, Jack, I may have missed it, uh, so I was getting my notebook. But the Moderna shots are going off are go are going to be at various senior residents you talk about. Are there any arrangements for Monotomy Manor? Are they supposed to go to Walgreens or what is the? To get I know the for the I know for the children there have been clinics at Thompson School um, and other schools in Arlington. Uh, yep. In regards to the Monotomy Manor residents, yes, I mean, there's options through CVS, Walgreens. Um, this was a decision that, you know, he's, we were lucky enough to be able to make this partnership and they, you know, wanted to focus on sites with um, large amounts of individuals, 65 plus. Um, so we, we were happy to, to be able to get any sort of assistance through them. So while we were hoping that Monotomy Manor would be included, um, we're, we're grateful that we're getting clinics at the other sites. No, I'm glad you have that. Um, but I'm just wondering, maybe it'd be possible to send out a notice to all of the parents at Monotomy Manor and let them know where they can get the booster shot. It seems to be very important now with this variant. Now, it's going to be here by Christmas, they say. Yep, most definitely, we can look into that. Hirala, do you have any suggestions? Whoops, she's suggestions for how to let no parents of where to get the booster shots i think that a notice would be the best thing that we could really do honestly okay thank you i think um maybe it's quicker with an email chain i think don't we have the email addresses of all the folks down there jack we, we do yes yeah yeah, we constantly have a, uh sorry an issue with um people not you know reading their emails or maybe not even having an email address. So I do think that delivering it door by door would be best. Yeah. <clears throat> Either way, uh, take care of that. Great. Uh, certainly congratulations in order to uh, Jack and his wife on the birth of their daughter the other night <laughs> and rather quickly. And nice, beautiful Christmas present. So congratulations to Jack. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the uh, integrated pest management proposal, I th think you all saw it in your packet. Don't know if you get a chance to review it, but do you want to talk about some of, some of the highlights, Jack? Terminix? Yeah, so we, we had two proposers for the um, for the re request for proposal for integrated pest management. Um, Terminix was determined to be the, the responsive, responsible, and lowest bidder. Um, they met all the all the requirements. Both both proposers were determined to be advantageous. Um, and Terminex was determined to be the lowest bidder. So we're, we're excited to be able to start moving forward with them and starting to set up some of the parameters outlined in the uh, request for proposal. I think if folks haven't read it yet, it's uh, very detailed and very involved. So you might want to take a read of it. <clears throat> it looks like they've covered all the bases, but Joanne, did you raise your hand? Yes, I did read it, but it was a while ago, <laughs> quickly. But I just wanted to ask Jack, when we first talked about this and looked up Cambridge and Boston integrative, they had a, some of them, and I'm sure you know better than I do, had um, training programs for maintenance men. The idea of integrated pest management is to find something, a pest infestation very early and treat it, it costs less, certainly much better for the residents. And I thought, one of the ideas that they had, which may not fit for the Arlington Housing Authority, is to give a short training program to the maintenance people. So when they go in to fix a leaky sink, they're supposed to look around for these signs to see if there's any sort of early signs of any pest infestation and then report it. Did I get that right? No, that, that sounds correct. And, um, and, and I you know, as we get rolling, that that is the you know the plan is to have good communication and education between all parties. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 
you know, that I'm sure there's going to be a, a you know, Terminex have had have worked with other entities. They do work for some of the housing authority. They do work for other municipalities and schools. And um, so we, I think that, you know, we'll be able to get some good insight from them, but we'll be able to hold them to the parameters, like you said. So we're, we're excited to, you know, be able to utilize that and, and figure out what, what the best way is um, to educate the staff, whether it's, you know, additional training or utilizing them. I mean, utilizing them, but, you know, we may try to find some additional training for them as well. When were they starting? I didn't see the date. So they're going to they're start effective immediately. Is that part of the contract that they'll train the maintenance people or not? I'd have to look at the um, at the act at the specifics within the request for proposal. My understanding is that education and communication is for all parties. So as far as like formal trainings for maintenance staff, I don't know if that's outlined specifically. Um, but that's you know I think that's that falls within the expectation. And you know while we may you know seek outside training um, to supplement that you know, through other professional agencies. I think that that's something that's definitely on the table. Okay, good. It doesn't have to be extensive. Just have a, a meeting yeah. and say, this is what you look for when you go into yeah. a I think that's definitely possible. I think that's, that's very likely. And, you know, I, I, I agree with you. And I think they'd, they'd be happy to do that. We've worked with Terminex uh, for some time. Um, they actually have been doing some work for us. And now we're going to formalize it and put them into this type of a plan, which I think is going to help them. Um, do an even better job for us. But Fiorella? Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's a educational outreach to residents and staff. So maybe at the maintenance uh, with the TAs. Um, another thing I wanted to mention was that in the proposal, it says that they're going to have a line of communication between the property manager and the people that are going to be doing the pest control. But I was wondering if we can include in that the tenants association as well whether it would be, you know, communicating at the maintenance meetings where they're both going to be there already. Um, I just think that being able to hear from people that are living in the actual buildings might be helpful to them rather than just the property managers. I may just have like a, a vague idea of where the problems could be coming from. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, yeah. I mean, I think we should have them, uh, a representative of Terminex show up, um, not at every single president's meeting, but, certainly, you know, once a quarter, you know, unless there's an issue to talk directly from the presidents. And I think on that note, too, and I'll talk to um, the Terminex, but, you know, maybe maybe a way in which we can, can attack that, too, is to have them go to the actual tenant association meeting so that they're actually communicating with the residents themselves. Yeah. I think yeah. the kind of president's meeting is a, is a good idea, but maybe, you know, in, in that same, you know, mind, you know, thought, uh, line of thought, you know, maybe that's a good attack, too. Yeah, exactly. So that's great. That's a good improvement. Uh, any other questions on that? Oh, I do, actually. Um, yep. There was a part where it was, you know, where it is, um, it says, this allows service technicians to determine which pests are present, likely harborage sites, housekeeping challenges, structural repair, and other concerns that may contribute to pest activity. So it does say that they would, I don't know if I understood it right, but like help with this. I'm wondering how they would go along with the housekeeping challenges. So I, I think in that sense, they would identify or help identify the units that are, are having struggles with that. You know, because maybe if you have an, an issue with hoarding, that could lead to creating a home for different types of pests. You know, by you know by figuring out the root cause, you can help address the um, the pest issue in some of those cases. So in that case, you know, may have that would be a good instance where the property manager would need to be part of the conversation or present. Then the property manager can can work with the resident, get them assistance if it's available, and and try to um address the situation through a social service aspect by partnering with the various um, social services agencies in the area, like Minuteman Senior Services and, mm -hmm. and others. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, number five, uh, approval of the certificate of substantial completion for the balcony resurfacing project at Chestnut Manor. So, um, so they, they have finished um, the punch, all the punch list items, our director of maintenance, modernization, superintendent of maintenance, in, in addition to the to the assigned architect have 
have done inspections and determined that the, the contractor has met um, the milestones necessary to, um, to get the certificate of substantial completion. We need a motion for that? Yes. Any I make a motion that we approve the certificate of substantial completion for the balcony resurfacing project. Great, for Chestnut Manor. Do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second. Nick, so we have a motion by Joanne, seconded by Nick. Uh, all in favor, uh, Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Brian is a yes. It's a unanimous vote. We move now to number six. Approval of the proposed change order requests um, for the Arlington Housing Authority window replacement and building exterior re renovations at Winslow Towers. Jeff, do you need, um, I think you need votes on everything A to, A to F, is that correct? Or can we take one vote, John? Greco. As long as it's specific enough, you can identify it, you can do it in one vote. So uh, if you wanna do, for example, six, you can do that in one vote rec if you identify it as A, B, C, and D for, in the amount of money. Right, great. Anything you wanna to add to that, Jack? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, just, just to give a very quick synopsis of it, you know, um, change orders four, five, and six related to some unforeseen conditions um, related to the, uh, the sill and trim. So it led to some increased costs. Um, change order seven and eight uh, were related to the, to the floors. And the, what they identified was they would be able to utilize some of the, the existing pieces in some places. And then there were some a large cost savings related to them using some of those pieces. So that's why you see the, the cost and then it, it have a very substantial credit on, um, on, change, order, on change order eight. Mm, um, yeah. And then also on change order seven, we were able to, to take some of the, the extra flooring that they had, had ordered and put it in our stock so that we can um, utilize that in future, you know, instances where we may, may need it, whether it's unit re re renovations or what have you. Um, yep. And then, and then change order order nine um, was related to an increased costs due to the contractor needing to sound and ensure all compromised areas of the concrete are repaired. Um, and then. And then the other half of change order nine is there's some outstanding work in the middle that still needs to be completed. And, and, and while they wait to, to figure out a plan on how they're gonna attack that, um, it was decided that we would have that credit um, while, while they decide and come back to us for their plan for the spring. So do we have a motion uh, for six and also uh, include eight, eight through F in your motion? I motion to approve the proposed change order request PCO four through PCO nine for the Arlington Housing Authority window replacement and building exterior exterior renovation at Winslow Towers. Great. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Great. So moved by Fiorella, second by Gar. All in favor, Nick. Yes. 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 Gar. Garza, yes. Uh, Joanne? Yes. And Fiorella? Yes. And Brian is a yes. That's the unanimous vote. We now move to number seven, uh, the approval of the submission for the CDBG application for the Hauser building roof replacement project. Jack, do you want to comment at all? Or? So, so the reason why we're submitting this is, you know, I've had some good conversations with Mallory Sullivan, Jenny Raid from the town. <laughs> And Mallory Sullivan being the, um, the individual who the administrator for the CDBG uh, funds in town. Um, we also had some good conversations with the state relative to projects that we have that would be good, um, good candidates for this type of a grant due to them being um, projects that are gonna be happening within the next year that, that qualify. Um, additionally, the reason why we, we wanna submit an application for this project is because uh, we're only gonna be submitting one application, one final application for CPA, and that's for the, the window project in the Nottomy Manor. Um, and that was due to the high, um, high quantity of, of applications uh, throughout town for CPA. So after having conversations with, um, you know, after myself and Joanne met with some members of the CPA, uh, it was determined that it was in the best interest of the housing authority to, to submit one sole application for CPA um, so that we were able to get, um, hopefully get the, 
get the request fulfilled that we want for that to get that funding. Um, so this will help supplement this other project. Any questions? We have a motion. A motion to approve the submission of community um, development block grant application for the Hauser building roof replacement project. Great. We have a second. I'll second it. So moved by Fiorella, second by Nick. Uh, all in favor? Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Duane? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian is a yes. That's unanimous vote. Uh, number eight, tenant association funding. Um, this is something for a little bit of a discussion. Um, as you may recall, um, the regulations stipulate that we provide each LTO um, with $6 per unit used to, to run their LTOs, their local tenant organizations. Uh, and Jack and I discussed back and forth. Um, there's some, we, we want to have a meeting with the presidents and maybe do it at the next meeting to outline some of this and, and make sure that it's in their bylaws in terms of how they spend it and how they account for it. Um, so my thought was that, you know, come January, that we, we allocate and provide the checks to these LTOs. Um, I'm not sure if Anonymy has a check in account yet, um, but, but we can go over that in the next uh, president's meeting um, and provide some stipulations. Second to that, you know, we had historically provided funds to the things for Christmas parties or uh, cookouts and things of that nature. And um, I think in the same meeting, uh, we would want to uh, work with the LTOs to get them to come up with a budget going forward of what they need. And perhaps uh, rather than just do a blank, uh, perhaps we, we approve them in our meetings as they come up. So for instance, um, um, if um, well, one of the facilities wants to do a St. Patrick's Day party and they're requesting a, a $1,000 donation, that we um, we we approve that um, as they come up into the board meeting, uh, and this will kind of flow into the discussion about the charitable foundation uh, later down at number ten. So, yeah, any any thoughts about this, or, or Jack, do you want to add anything else to it? Well, I think you you hit upon you know some of what we have talked about, and I think you know, like you said, it's a good opportunity for the board to discuss. Yeah, I mean the uh, in the past we've we've just given checks and we haven't really separated the six dollars from any funds we've given and, and we really need to go forward and make sure we separate the six dollars and you know the ltos can use that to um, whether they need to buy a printer or paper or ink or something like that um you know that's what that those funds are, are for to get them to run their association it could be flyer or whatever you want to call it but um but certainly and we can talk a little bit more when we talk about the charitable foundation. Wait a second. I had a question. Yep. By state regulation, you're supposed to give them six dollars per resident, right? Is that the correct? Uh, per, unit. Per, per unit, yeah. Per unit. Oh, that's different. And well, so that is under the president of the tenants organization for materials that they need to run the tennis organization right Correct. That, that's just what it is. yep and they can take care of that then there may i think what you're trying to say there may be some additional money so i think historically we have given them more money for christmas dinners or things like that is that right that's right but i mean they've run their own parties um last yeah. year first time we did the christmas dinner thing but of course um, you know, with COVID, it's a little confusing. But. Okay, so the additional money is something we really want to have a sense of some reporting of how it's spent. Is that yeah, I yeah, I think I think we want to work with the because we have you know five and Drake will have one um, shortly, hopefully. You know, I think we need to work tighter with the LTO presidents and, and their board. Mm -hmm into a budget process to get them thinking forward and planning for the, these functions and, um, you know, get them all on the same page. And I think that's a way to do it. 
And also, you know, the most important part is getting receipts for the funds. Uh, you know, we've had problems in the past with you know, getting receipts for the funds, and we want to make sure the funds are spent uh, appropriately. And we want to make sure that the the LTOs in their board of directors um, approve of these funds. You know, we don't want one president to go off and, and buy something without the approval of the either the association or the board. And that's where we need to make sure that their bylaws uh, stipulate uh, how those funds are going to be spent. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? Yep. Uh, what do other housing authorities do? Do they give more than six or just stick with the six? Or I don't, um, we're in a unique position because we've funded this, you know, through funds from the wash machines over the years. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure that other housing, Jeff, maybe you could try, chime in, but I don't believe other housing authorities actually do this. I mean, you, you're obligated to give the $6 per unit, but the additional funds for their parties and stuff, I don't think um, that many of them do that. Jack? Yeah, I, I would have to pull. I'd say, you know, especially the smaller ones, they don't have access to necessarily the amount of funding that we have, but, you know, you know, I'd, I'd have to pull, but I would think that we're, we're fairly generous. Yeah. Yep. My, experience, my experience has been that you are fairly generous with the most housing authorities in terms of using the, uh, allocating those funds. Yep. So, so we give way more than. Yeah. We give. We've been given way more than the six dollars per unit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's all I have. All right. <clears throat> Um, so, Jack, we, we can work uh, on that one after the first of the year, uh, and we can bring it up in the next Tenant President Association. Let's see if we can get them going in that direction. So, moving on to um, number nine, uh, the holiday meal. So, we obviously took a vote and took a decision um, because of COVID. We were going to offer the holiday meals again. Uh, I spoke with Dag, uh, CM up at the Agostinos. He graciously is willing to do it again. And so we printed flyers. The flyers have been distributed by the, uh, the facilities and uh, they'll be collected Saturday. And we'll call in the head count and the staff will be delivering the food uh, on Christmas Eve in conjunction with the uh, tenant presidents and other volunteers that they've all got together to distribute. Um, we did make the call because it's a lot more challenging in the manner to distribute food make the call to what we did last year and give cards. So um, in Jack's absence with his baby, Chris is taking care of it. And um, and we're still using that $10 figure because that's what, that's what we're paying up with tags. So in the scope of the manner, if, if there's five members in the household, then they'll get five times 10, they'll get $50 in, in gift cards. Uh, so and we'll distribute that next week. Um, yes, for uh, Fiorella. I, I, I'm sorry, but I remember, so it actually, that this will entail a correction for some the meeting. So November 17th, because it says that um, Ms. Badella said that she wants meals instead of gift cards for the tenants of anatomy manor, which should have a correction because I, I remember mentioning that the tenants association had mentioned at the last meeting, which were also at the meeting minutes for November 9th, that they would rather the meal um i i prefer the gift card however i don't know what all the tenants rather so how should we go on about this because i i i think vanessa was the one that ended up mentioning that they had voted that they rather the meal yeah but unfortunately from our perspective it's it's a, too much of an undertaking and we don't have the staff and the people to do that and you know to do it i mean the buildings are easy the food's going to be delivered to the community room and they, they've all got volunteers. They're going to go walk the floors and put them on the door knobs. Um, you know, it's a little bit different in the manner in terms of all the volunteers. And you know, some folks might not be home, so they don't want to, don't want to leave it out on the door knob. So just you know, it's impossible. And and we we you know ran out of time. You know, I think for next year, if the manor the, the association can get together and we do the food, if they do the flyers, collect and give us the numbers. Assuming if we do it next year. Um, and we put it in the community room and then they take the responsibility of distributing it. You know, that would mean somebody would have to sit there for hours and hours while folks 
they get home from work, come and get their food. So we just felt it's, oh, no, it's just easy to do gift cards, you know, so put them in the door, you know. So we had to make that call, unfortunately. That's good, yeah. yeah. So um, that should go out on um, Christmas Eve, and, and I want to thank the staff in advance, uh, Roly and the whole gang that has kind of participated in this great food distribution. There's well over 500 meals here, so it's not a, it's not a task, and it's really not an easy task for Dags. You know, Christmas Eve is his busy day, but um, but he's been very generous with us, both in the pricing and also putting this together. So, um, number 10. So in your packet, um, what I propose is... Um, and I know I've spoken to a lot of you about this, um, and I know we've talked briefly at our meetings. So I'm proposing that we form a charitable foundation. We call it the Arlington Housing Authority Charitable Foundation. And really, the mission of this is to provide support and outreach for the social health and well-being of those persons residing in the Arlington Housing Authority properties. So this is very specific. Um, we would seek grants. And we would seek funding, grants, donations, donations of cash or securities, uh, or even donations of, of condos and houses if people so wish. Um, and we take that, uh, we form a board of directors. This would be a true 5013C operation. Um, and we turn Joanne loose on her grant writing. Grant um, writing. So, uh, for instance, the Cummings Foundation in, in Woburn. The banks around here all have foundations, charitable foundations. They all give out funds. And, and nobody's going to write a check to the Arlington Housing Authority, the state agency. But I think we would be successful in having folks write checks to our charitable foundation. And, and those funds, as I said, they would be used for those things. So it could be to provide fund, funding to the buildings to have parties, to provide funding uh, to the mana for for special events and, and special things, um, it's just a wide open uh, field of, of opportunity here. Um, and you know, as I proposed here on the flyer, you know, we have a simple board of directors of five people. Uh, rotate the years so you, so uh, there would be consistency there. Uh, and this all this stuff can be worked out. I mean, I think what I'd like to get a vote on, on the formation of it. And we would then work with the attorneys and have him draft up bylaws and that sort of stuff. And we can go from there. Um, you know, we need to have it registered. It's very easy to register these things. Um, but, you know, I feel in talking with Joanne and Joanne and Jack and I met a number of times. I think I think the opportunity would be much more successful with opportunity raising funds and grants for a charitable foundation uh, than simply saying we need money to help uh, build and things like that. And these funds could go towards the garden projects and things like that as well. So the, uh, it's, it's pretty much wide open. Um, so any comments? Yep, Fiorella. Um, I was wondering, um, so the, are the office, because my only concern would be, it would be nice to include whether it was, you know, the tenant or the LTO president, either one to be in the monotonous manner included, like family housing. So have like one elderly and then one family housing rather than both members being from the elderly buildings? Yeah, I think uh, this is, yeah, that can be worked out. I okay. Be a five member committee. Um, you know, you certainly don't want, you know, a million people on the committee, but we, we can increase that, you know, and. Um, um, yeah, add one more member. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, could we go after CDBG funds? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Say that again. Is that Jack is doing? Uh, Joanne, he asked if we could go after CBG funds, CDBG funds for the foundation. More grants. Is it? Jack is, yeah. Um, yeah. But there are a whole lot of other grants um, out there because I've been looking for them. Like the Cummings Foundation, they have a lot of money. Um, you know, you have to write the grant specifically and we'll ask all of you, the board and Jack, some various, I mean, they have certain parameters, like some of them do healthcare, some of them do other um, social educational things. But um, 
it would be nice to get some of that. We did the community gardens. I had people come up and asked if they could just give me some money. And I thought, I can't do this. I can't just take this money. So this would be a very easy way for people um, to December, you know, when they decide they're going to give money to charitable um, organizations, they can give money to us. Right. And, and we can also do grants and so on. And I was surprised to find out that Leader Bank, all these banks have actually uh, a side for charitable giving. And uh, yeah, we all have, all banks have charitable foundations. Oh, Gar knows that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> on the committee. <laughs> so this you would look at from a whole holistic point of view. So for instance, if the garden project, we would so Joanne's grant would be for a garden project in every facility, not just one facility. That's right. Or or like a health clinic. I mean, maybe we look for a grant for you know a 12-month health program where we where we hire nurses to come into the facilities once a week to do blood pressure screenings and other health screenings. Um, you know, whether we get school hiring tutors to help out the kids in the manor, you know, so it's a, so I think, you know, the next step after we do I can this. Think is, one is, is um, yep. I know that I spoke to some residents at, at Mononomy Manor, they could only get one week of summer camp fidelity. That's, yeah. and we can just expand that. That's right. Yeah. So it's, it's, to, Jack doesn't have to run it. <laughs> right. <laughs> So the, so the grant writing would be for the specific thing. So, I mean, I think this is where the LTO and the president's meeting would be very important to come up with these ideas and put together a list of 20 different ideas. So then you could apply for 20 different grants for 20 different specific purposes. So, um, I mean, it's, it's the start, obviously. Go ahead, John. Yeah, I just want people in my, in my former, can I, did you want to say something, Gar? I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. You're, you're on a roll. <laughs> In my former life as an academic, I wrote a lot of grants. And when I moved to Arlington, I wrote a number of grants for the um, Thompson School at a library. We got someone to come in from the, an intern from the Harvard um, Design School who put together a big report on greening Thompson about ideas to use natural daylight at the windows. And, it was really quite impressive. <laughs> I was surprised I got them. But we got, uh, and I got a couple of others. So um, I like to do it. So I'll do it also in consultation. But I looked, and there are quite a, a lot of possibilities. Now, Gar, in banks, do they have a specific kind of project? Or do you just write that we need uh, no, it's not specific at all. Yeah. Supplement the 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 uh, summer. Yeah, uh, we get all sorts of requests, and we have one person. The marketing department usually does stuff like that. And, uh huh. Um, so we'll take a picture of them shaking hands with with Jack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other questions on this? Uh, yeah, I have one more question. Um, we talked about this before in the past. The past five years of doing this foundation. And one of the things we talked about is obviously there's a lack of affordable housing. So we talked about maybe acquiring more through this foundation. Would that be something we could look into, like maybe a domestic violence unit, or yeah. is that, or, or or is our mission not, uh, is it too specific, or does it let us do that type of thing where we can acquire? No, I think I think if you read the mission, it's it's very open ended. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, so it's very open ended. So if if we had folks, and I think we would we would solicit this to some extent. You know, if you've got folks in the town that are um, willing to donate their house, they're moving down south or something like that, and they're in a different financial you know, absolutely would love to have the house and, and work work with them, just like the big hospitals do. We'd work with them in terms of naming and, and, and gifting and what purpose they'd like to see for it, whether it be a family or this or that, you know. Uh, same thing with condos. Um, I think the, the, the mission is, is wide open and, um, you know, as I said, it's just, um, it's wide open for a reason. So. So if some people give money for a domestic violence victim housing, but it's not enough, then we can go to Gar's bank, some bank and say, look, we've got the seed money 
we right. need X amount of more money and then we can get some housing for a victim of domestic violence. Right, right. So, good idea. Any yeah, other good idea? Yeah, and I don't think we're going to compete with any, we're not going to compete with any local groups. We're not competing with the Boys and Girls Club and their fundraising or, or Fidelity House. This is a totally different ball game. Just competing uh, with the Housing Corp of Arlington, Brian. That's, that's, where, you, that's, where, you, that's where you're going to compete because they're not. But that's yeah. okay. It's a great yeah. idea. We've tried to do this for the last 15 years. We never get it off the ground. We should do well, this. We are. <laughs> and now that people know more about us, too, they, and people exactly. have asked yeah. that exactly. they wanted to give it's money. A great, it's a great idea. It's a great mission. Great. Uh, do you need a vote? Oh, yep, we need a vote. So do we have a motion for that? I so moved. I second that. So that's uh, moved by Nick, second by Fiorella. Um, all in favor, Joanne? Yes. Gar? Yes. Uh, Fiorella? Yes. Nick? Yes. And Brian's a yes. So we'll move forward um, on this, and uh, we're going to move forward quickly. So we'll have more uh, on this for uh, next meeting. Hopefully we'll have it established by then. Yes, and then we have crit, the end of the year tax giving, <laughs> maybe. Yep. So uh, next on the agenda is um, uh, number 11, executive director hiring update. We received, uh, as you know, we advertised the month of November. We received 10 applicants. Uh, we have a screening committee that is screened. Uh, we've got it down to two applicants. It'll be a meeting Monday night uh, for the president's to uh, interview the two candidates uh, committee if they uh, so choose to go on it as well. So after they interview the, the uh, two candidates, the committee would recommend one candidate to the board, hoping to have a board meeting next week quickly um, for the hiring of the, of the new director. So if um, things, and we were supposed to do this tomorrow night, but you know, uh, we gotta give um, our, Jack a little bit of leeway since he had another baby. So uh, <laughs> we're planning on Monday. Uh, at yeah, seven. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so we're planning on Monday at seven. And then, uh, so I think we're going to try and post um, for Wednesday uh, to have a, the next one has to be a public meeting of the board on Wednesday, next Wednesday. We can do a quick meeting to vote on the new director that's recommended by the committee and, and that sort of stuff. So that's where we are with the executive director. Um, I was a bit surprised that we only had 10 candidates. I will tell you that. But, so um, any questions on that? So number 12, uh, approval of the regular minute meetings uh, in 2021. And just, just a little bit of information on that. The reason why that's on here is, be, again, is because I, there was a typo on last month's agenda. I had written 920 instead of 1020. So uh, it's on it's the minutes you saw last month. I just I had to put it on again because you voted for 920 instead of 1020. Great. So do we have a motion for that? Motion to approve this uh, regular meeting minutes of October 20th, 2021. Second. Okay. Moved by Fiorella, second by Joanne. All in favor, Nick? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Brian's a yes. Number 13, the special meeting minutes of uh, November 9. Motion to approve the special meeting minutes of November 9th, 2021. Second. Second. Uh, moved by Fiorella, second by Ga. Uh, all in favor, Nick? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Gar? Yes. And Joanne? Yes. Brian's a yes. And number 14, approval of the regular meeting minutes of November 17, 2021. Go ahead, Viola. That's where I was um, asking for the correction of where it says Ms. Badella said she wants meals instead of gift cards for the tenants of Monotomy Manor. No I said um, that the tenant association had mentioned that they wanted to go back to the dinners rather than the gift cards. Okay. That correction, Jack? Yep, not a problem. So we could uh, we could approve them with that correction. Any other corrections? Okay. Do we have a motion for that to move, uh, approve them? A motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of 11 17 2021 with the correction. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, all in favor, Nick? Yes. Uh, Joanne? Yes. 
Gar? Yes. And Fiorella? Yes. Yes, and Brian's a yes. Uh, brings us up to number 15, executive session meeting minutes of November 17, 2021. Motion to approve the executive session meeting minutes of 11 17, 2021. Great. Second. 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 So moved by Fiorella, second by me. In favor, Julian? Yes. Gar? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Nick? Yes. And Brian is, uh, is in favor as well. Uh, local tenant organizations. So I'll quickly read this again. Um, glasses. So public participation guidelines during Zoom meetings uh, in an effort to conduct the business of the Arlington Housing Authority and to maintain an orderly meeting whereby all can hear and understand what is being said without being talked over, I would ask that everyone abide by the following guidelines. Ten of presidents, presidents will be recognized by the chair and do not have to raise a hand or send a chat, a chat message. I'd ask that your presentations are specific only to your facility and to the tenants residing in your facility but also ask that any maintenance or building issues are brought up in the monthly maintenance meetings and not during these board meetings. Uh, the director of facilities and his staff better prepare to answer and resolve any issues that you may bring up as this board is not typically able to address these concerns without any additional data or research. Uh, tenants, tenants, if you wish to speak, you should send a chat message in the Zoom room with your name, your address, and your subject that you wish to present. I'd also ask that you refrain from bringing up any building or maintenance issues. These concerns should be brought directly to your presidents, who will in turn bring them up at the maintenance meetings. You can also report any issues directly to the Arlington Housing Authority via the phone system. As I stated, the reason for this change uh, is facility and maintenance issues can be resolved faster by going directly to the maintenance supervisor staff during the monthly meetings. They have the knowledge and skills necessary Search your concerns to provide the appropriate follow up plan. However, if urgent or a, ten or a president or tenant does not feel that their issue has been adequately addressed or there are privacy concerns, you should send an email directly to Jack Nagel, the executive, interim executive director, who will follow up with you personally. Uh, general public, anyone wishing to present during public participation should send a message in the chat feature name, address, and the subject matter you wish to present. During your subject, uh, depending on your subject matter, I may not recognize you tonight, but add your subject to the next board meetings agenda where we can engage in a more inclusive dialogue and keep in compliance with the open meeting laws. Um, board response and time limits, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be commented upon by the board members nor a decision made the night of the presentation. If deemed appropriate, in order to conform with the open meeting laws, the subject matter may be added to the next board meeting, whereby the AHA staff, the board, and the public would have prior notice and can be prepared to address the subject accordingly. Speakers will be allowed a three-minute time limit to present. This may be extended to the discretion of the chair or if requested by a board member. So, um, tenant organizations. I don't think Pam, she had emailed me. So Pam is not here from Winslow. Um, I see Ellen. Ellen, are you Ellen Lay, are you representing Cusack tonight? Yes. Great. Go ahead, Ellen. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, we greatly appreciate the um, the booster clinics. It's really important, and also distributing the testing. Um, so that's very much appreciated, um, as well as the integrated pest management. Hopefully, getting started quickly. That's terrific. And um, in terms of this charitable, uh, charitable foundation, that sounds terrific in terms of adding additional things that might be helpful for the well being of the communities in the different buildings. Um, but I do want to bring up a, a, one issue. Um, you know, historically, um, there has been a, a budget that is not just paper or things like that um, for the Tenants Association. So I think, for example, um, you know, like maybe every other month or something, there might be something social 
um, that is announced for the whole building. Um, it could be, you know, a pizza party, or it could be, uh, you know, cookies and hot cocoa <laughs> as you're decorating the Christmas tree or something like that, that brings the community together. It's a social event, or it could be, you know, getting a new game or something like that. These are things that I think are really important for um, having a cohesive community, for bringing people together, for reducing isolation, for socialization, for emotional and physical well-being. Um, so I, I, I just want to try to, for folks to think about that in terms of if, if it turns into um, every time, you know, we want to get, a, a, like, have an ice cream social, you know, if, um, or have a pizza party that we have to, that folks have to ask permission for that, as opposed to having a budget that is responsible for with receipts, of course. Um, I, I think it would, could be very demoralizing. First of all, it's very different from way it has always been. Um, and these are, you know, people who are majority of which are elderly, you know, it, it could be perceived as rather infantilizing um, to suddenly have to say, you know, could I do something in a very different way than I've always done. So I think in terms of how, how to have some kind of money in the budget for um, socialization, um, you know, something cohesive for the community, especially since it's the way it's always been done. Yeah, I, let me just chime in. Uh, I mm -hmm. agree. And, and, you know, I think, I think there needs to be, let's call it a slush fund, where you would do those things that you wouldn't have to go and ask if you could buy Christmas lights. You know what I mean? We're not talking mm -hmm. about every dollar and cent here. So I think, you know, when we get together in the president's meetings, we certainly discuss it and figure it out together. But I think, you know, there should be a, a dollar value um, that, that the buildings get to use for those things like you talked about, you know, puzzles, books, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but I think the, the other thing, the big items would be, you know, if you're going to have have the Christmas party catered. I know that Winslow has a has a big catered Christmas party. You know, that's obviously a bigger dollar value. Um, so, no, I think we're all on the same page. I think we're on the same oh, page. Okay, all right. So so it doesn't sound like there's going to be a big difference that way. I mean, we, we know about the receipts. Like, it's typical that we've always had a holiday party for, you know, the Christmas um, end of the year holiday. And also that there's this usually you know, in the summer, like a barbecue kind of, thing. it's not really a barbecue, but, right. <laughs> you know, it's a nice event that brings everybody together. Yeah. So those things yeah. have always been kind of separate from that budget. But um, I think it's just really important for the well-being of the community to have some, some money in the budget for socialization, bringing people together, and that, that the people that are on the Tenants Association are responsible for and but budgeting and not having to, you know, and you probably don't want to have like a special meeting every time somebody wants to order a pizza either. <laughs> so. Right, right. No. Yeah, exactly. No, we're on the same page. Okay, great. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. yep. Um, so Pam's not here. Alan Sharon, I don't think is on from Chestnut. Drake is no Jen Hernandez. See Jen. I saw, saw her. Yep. Lillian, yeah. Is it all set? You can hear me? Yep, go ahead. Thank you. Tomorrow evening, as you know, Brian, will be having at 5.30, the Executive Council of the MMTA, along with Janet, will be having the holiday party for the children. And we hope that all of you on the board will be able to attend. Um, Monotony Manor is also intending on filing as a nonprofit and has already started looking into the application process. Um, as far as the holiday meals go, we have a tenant association now that would have been more than willing and happy to handle the distribution of meals and or gift cards had we been consulted about it. Um, it would be, it would have best suited the residents of Anonymy Manor by getting a choice of meal or gift card. I understand that the logistics aren't as cut and dry as you may like. However, myself and the other executive council members and residents would have been willing and able to work amongst ourselves or with AHA employees or board members to make this happen. Um, again, had we been given the option. Um, so I, I understand that we have only newly been recognized. However, we are ready, willing and able to do whatever we can um, for our residents. And lastly, yesterday with much disappointment, I received your email, Brian, about having gone forth and started the interview process after I had informed you that we would and are allowed to be involved by reviewing the resumes prior to first interviews and involved in the 
views to which you disagreed. We had not been able to connect over the weekend and you started interviews Monday. I feel that this is a blatant disregard of the tenant association, myself as president and the other 178 units. We've expressed our desire and that we are, and have been able to look, have been looking forward to building a strong and amicable working relationship with the board and feel that the hiring of the executive director and our allowed involvement at the proper junction would have been a great place to start and show that you, the chairman, and the other board members had the same intention. Unfortunately, to myself and the others, this shows otherwise and shows a lack of respect to all of us at Menominee Manor. I'll be contacting someone at state level who can clarify the tenant association allowed involvement in the hiring of AHA employees and we certain to forward that information to you upon receipt. And I will be emailing you regarding any and all internal hiring coming up. So Jen, as I emailed you back and, and sent back the regulations that you sent to me, uh, I, I, yeah. I highlighted yeah. it in red, it's yeah, very yeah. specific. It said that the committee, the, uh, the local mm -hmm. housing committee has nope. the right to do a preliminary screening Screening of, of resumes. We are not, just, let, me yeah, speak, Chris. Says, yeah, let me speak, Chris. No, let me speak. I, I understand. Go ahead. Let me speak. Go ahead. So, you know, we're not going to share the all the applicants to the... To Nobody you. asked you for that. Well, yes, you did. You no, I didn't ask you for... That's not what I asked you for, Brian. That's not true. I asked you, well, I understand when I replied to you and told you that I understand we... If you do the preliminary screening as you are allowed, which you chose to do, which is fine, totally fine by us, we are allowed to see the two resumes that you're putting through, not the 10, I understand, but we were allowed to see, we would have been allowed to see the two that you're putting through for interview. And then we would be able to participate in the first interview as stated in the, in the state regulation. So that's- would you, let me, would you let me address that then? Certainly, absolutely, please. First of all, if you would return my emails, you'd see that the meeting is to go over the, the two finalists that were chosen by the preliminary screening. Okay, but have you done the already? And when you reply to the email, then okay. you get a copy of the two resumes of the two finalists. So okay. you'll be able to read right. that. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. Your first reply to me was that you didn't have time to write all that and that you wanted to yeah, talk and, on the and, and See, unfortunately, you know, a lot of you guys. Uh, a lot of us guys? I don't, I don't have time. I don't have time to respond to every single line that you write. I thought, wow, I, was clear. I, thought I was very clear in, in showing you the regulations where it said the local housing authority has the right to do the preliminary screenings, which we did. Again, but I just said you do have the right to do that. That's right. right. And, now, and now but the preliminary screening didn't include preliminary uh, first interviews without us. We conducted preliminary screening and completed it on Monday as I put in my email. Now, if yes. you don't know that, that's unfortunate. I, I, I absolutely do. We are inviting you and the other presidents to a Zoom meeting on Monday to ask questions of the candidates. Right, so, I understand that. And that's wonderful. So, I appreciate that very much. However, I'm just simply asking that the state regulation be followed as it's okay. supposed to be. So listen, I'm not gonna debate it any further. Our that's why, no, we don't have to. And that's not our really attorney said we're either. right on the money. We're no. conforming to all the regulations, and that's the end. Okay. Of it. So okay. Well, it's I'll unfortunate that we're going to. It's an, it's unfortunate that we're going to start this relationship this way. But well, I you know I'm invited I Monday. Be, I don't know that we're going to start it in any way in a bad way as long as we can get through this and come to a resolution that whether you're right or wrong. So it's fine, and we'll just we'll take it from here and. Once I have the information from the state person, this person at the state level, I will be sure to forward it to you. That's great. That's Thank great. You. See you tomorrow you night. Else, do you have anything else to add? No, just can't wait to see you all tomorrow night. Great. Thanks so much. Um, so that we have a. What time is the party tomorrow night? Sorry. 5 30. 5 30? Yeah. And Santa Claus will be there. Is it at the uh, skill center? I have a question. Isn't it? Yeah. Is Santa Claus actually one of the gentlemen that was walking around with um, Terminex, I believe? <laughs> did, did we stick to that? My mom was talking to him. I guess he wanted to do that. Yeah. I, I, Spanish I heard Santa that's the plan. Yeah? Oh, I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. classic. Oh, uh, Santa Claus. I hope no children are watching us. No kidding. So just for the board's purpose, um, to address a little further what she was mentioning, 
you know, John Greco reviewed the regulations in terms of the hiring, and we were well within our right to do the preliminary screenings that we did and conclude the two finalists. And now we will share the resumes of the finalists with the, with the uh, presidents who have uh, going to attend if they attend Monday night's meeting. So um, we are very much above board with this entire process, and uh, I'm very comfortable with it. And John Plus Greg we, has said that as well. Plus, we had two so, tenants on. We had two tenants on the uh, on the committee. On the preliminary, right? Yeah. The preliminary screening was was done by a committee that I appointed, Nick and myself, Pam Hauser as a president, uh, Mary Ann Donovan, who's a tenant, uh, and John Greco, our attorney, was the fifth person on the committee. So, uh, so I, you know, I'm very comfortable with this. Uh, Fiorella. I have a um, could we get those resumes uh, for the board members? Yeah, the, the next right. So you'll get a copy of them uh, for when we have our board meeting. Gotcha. So, so any other questions on that? Okay, I don't have any questions in the chat message. So uh, motion to adjourn. I um, to adjourn the meeting. Is it well? We usually when something like this occurs, we ask Jack to. Uh, to send flowers to the person who just had a wonderful event, but he can't ah. send them to himself. <laughs> I hope the rest of us will organize something. I'll take so. Anyway, I'll take so. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. What's her name, Jeff? What's yeah. her name? What is it? Sadie. 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 How pretty. And yep. and how much does she weigh? <laughs> Six pounds, one ounce. Wow. <laughs> she was three weeks early, Jack, huh? Yeah. Wow. Congrats. Thank you. There's nothing, like, right, great. nothing like a daughter, Jack. No. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Save your money. I know. Really? Not that <laughs> and yeah. wedding. And wedding, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so uh, motion to adjourn. I motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. I second. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, cool. Motion by Fiorella, second by Joanne. Uh, all in favor, Nick? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Gar? Yes. And Joanne? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good uh, holiday. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank guys. you, guys. Merry you Christmas. Too. Happy holidays, everybody. See you. Get a lot of sleep, Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs>